Nebula are an extremely common setting in works of science fiction, most often used as an all-purpose obstacle, hiding place, or decorative backdrop. While often compelling from a narrative standpoint, these uses are almost always in conflict with reality, and I'd like to take a moment to explain exactly why in this short video. The first concern is with the apparent ubiquity of Nebula in popular science fiction. It often seems like the crew of the Enterprise or the Millennium Falcon can't complete even the shortest of journeys without passing or stumbling into a Nebula, putting aside the fact that stumbling across anything at all on an interplanetary or interstellar voyage is astronomically unlikely. The simple truth is that Nebula are generally vast entities containing thousands of star systems whose positions are well recorded even today. While Nebula are not uncommon on a galactic scale, there are extremely few that fall within the boundaries of human spaceflight in most works of science fiction. Small, single-system nebula, like those often seen in Star Trek and Star Wars, do exist in reality, though in far less frequency. These smaller objects are known as planetary nebula, and are formed by low-mass stars as they shed their outer layers near the end of stellar evolution. One such example of this is the nearby Helix Nebula, which is approximately 5.7 light-years in diameter. While this is drastically smaller than a conventional nebula, it still covers a sizable interstellar region, and does not correlate with the many instances from Star Trek and Star Wars, where we have seen ships cross fully through a nebula using sublight propulsion alone. The smallest known nebula in the night sky is NGC 7027, which is approximately 0.2 light years, or 12,600 astronomical units in diameter, still far too large to traverse at sublight speeds in any reasonable time. One of the closest nebula to Earth is the Orion Nebula, located approximately 1,344 light-years from our solar system. The nebula is around 24 light-years in diameter, covering a vast region of space, and while it may appear to be a thick cloud of gas and dust, the region is in fact incredibly diffuse, as is in fact the case with all nebula. Which brings me to my next point concerning the often inaccurately portrayed density of nebula. Let's compare the density of a nebula to the density of the atmosphere on Earth, for example. The average particulate density of air is 30 quintillion particles per cubic centimetre, whereas for a nebula, it's closer to only a few thousand particles per cubic centimetre, which is functionally barely any different to a vacuum, and is in fact still less dense than any artificially created vacuum on Earth. So when we see the Enterprise enter the conveniently placed Mutara Nebula in the Wrath of Khan, what we should see is essentially no change in velocity for the ship, as the forces due to drag would still be negligible when compared to those from the normal interstellar medium. What we see instead is the entire bridge crew throwing themselves forward as they penetrate the seemingly concrete nebula wall. That is except for Kirk, who uncharacteristically seems to be the only one aware that they did not just fly into a giant space pillow. The final and perhaps most crucial point is that a nebula would not function as a convenient natural smokescreen to hide your starship from an encroaching Borg cube or Imperial Star Destroyer. A ship that is able to detect life signatures on board another ship through several layers of hull plating should have absolutely no trouble detecting an enemy ship through small traces of stellar dust. Two ships engaged in combat within a nebula would be able to see and detect each other just as easily as anywhere else. They would simply be battling against a much prettier backdrop. So there you have it. Nebula are enormous interstellar regions of diffuse gas, lightly scattered around the galaxy. Their locations are well-known and iconic, and suggesting that you quickly find one to hide within during a space battle would be akin to suggesting that you quickly run to the Great Wall of China and hide behind that. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. Follow the link in the description to check out the latest episode of The Neutral Zone, a podcast series where I'm joined by a number of other science fiction content creators to discuss a number of topics. 